In this video, I'll be going over some single-place predicate logic derivations. These questions are taken from an old test that I wrote, so these are a good indication of what I think are test-level questions. So here, the first is, not all cheesecakes are tasty, but no cheesecake is good for you. This is a pretty straightforward question. Uh, what it's testing you on is whether or not you understand the difference between uh, not all and no. And this is pretty straightforward. So not all can be symbolized in two different ways, but typically most people will see it as a negated of a universal. Cheesecake is the letter C, and tasty is A. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. So we have comma but, and we know but is an. No cheesecake is good for you. Well, we know that's C, and good for you is G. Well, for no cheesecake is good for you, again, you can symbolize it in two different ways. I'll do all the combinations here. But typically, I like to think of this as it's not the case that there exists a cheesecake. Now, what we just have to realize is both of these sides of the conjunction can be symbolized separately. So I can just put in some variables here. And I can put in the exact same variable x because it's actually free to use. Or I could change it to y. That's fine. So what does this symbolize like? Not all cheesecakes are tasty is not the case that for everything, if you were a cheesecake, then you are tasty. All I did here to fill in details was use the canonical form of the universal. And, which is but, no cheesecake is good for you. It's not the case that there exists something which is a cheesecake and is good for you. Now, the variants on this are very straightforward. Instead of saying not all cheesecakes are tasty, like so, I could say that there exists something that is a cheesecake and is not tasty. These are perfectly equivalent. So not all is the same as some not. And of course, the and is the same. And over here, to say no cheesecake is good for you, I said it's not the case that there exists something that's mm -hmm. a cheesecake and good for you. But I could rephrase that as for everything, if you're a cheesecake, then you are not good for you, or good for me, I guess. So any combination of these would work, but of course the and needs to be the main connective. OK, on to question two. Among scientists, a physicist is considered to be the best unless there is no theory of everything. This is a, actually a pretty straightforward question. There's only one trick to it, uh, and it is not among scientists. Among scientists needs to be quite straightforward. That is a restriction of my group. So the first thing I need to realize is this should say, for anything, if you're a scientist, then. And this is the main structure of the entire sentence. So immediately, I could actually start my symbolization just by saying, for anything, if you're a scientist, then, and close the bracket somewhere over here. But this is the structure of the sentence. Now I have to symbolize the rest. A physicist is considered to be the best unless there is no theory of everything. So what's my group? Well, my group is physicist, and my property is considered to be the best unless no theory of everything. That's actually my main property. Unless is easy, that's or, or you could symbolize it in the if not one, then the other. Anything is fine. So the group is physicists, so among scientists, then open bracket. If you are a physicist, that's C. You are considered to be the best, that's B, unless there is no theory of everything. E is the symbol for A is the theory of everything. So I'm going to have to do something with that. Now this is straightforward. Because I'm talking about among scientists, I need to keep the variable the same and keep it under the scope. So this says, if you're a physicist, then you are considered the best, unless there is no theory of everything. Now this is actually the trick. It would be tempting here to write not ex and finish. But what does this actually say? It says, for everything that x in my universe of discourse, such that x is a scientist and x is a physicist, then x is considered to be the best, or x is not a theory of everything. And this is just odd. This is actually saying that uh, my physicist, which is a scientist, is, the theory, is not the theory of everything. And that's wrong. What I really need to do is actually state there is no theory of everything. And if I say there is no, that's actually an existential claim. 
and negated existential claim, in fact. So what I really need to say is it's not the case that there is something, which is the theory of everything. And that's actually the tricky part of this question, because it invokes a new quantifier within the main scope. Okay, what are some variants of this? Well, I could know that I'm talking about among scientists a physicist, so I could actually rephrase this using sort of exportation rules to AX and CX arrow, and that would be fine. And another important rephrasing would be over here. I could actually restate this using the if not one, then the other. So I could have stated the unless as this. That's also fine. Or I could have stated the unless as this. And what I did was I actually dropped the negation from the consequent here. Uh, sorry, not the consequent. From not exists y, e, y, using a sort of simple double negation move. And these are perfectly equivalent. Now, if I was to symbolize it this way, I would need brackets around them to preserve the arrow as the main connective. Okay, so this question is actually quite straightforward until you get to the there is no theory of everything. It just requires you to realize that it is invoking a new existential claim. Okay, on to question three. Roller coasters and horror movies are scary, but they are popular when and only when they are both fun and epic. Uh, no real tricks to this one uh, except for roller coasters and horror movies. But this shouldn't really be a trick anymore. The and here. This is the cat-dog example. We really should conceive as or. And once we do that, this question is very straightforward. Roller coasters are C, horror movies are D, and scary is B. Okay, now so I have the basics down here. This is universal because it's claiming something about all roller coasters and horror movies. And I should always ask myself that. Am I talking about all or some? Then the group is roller coasters and horror movies. They are scary. Then I have this, but, which is and, they are popular when and only when they are both fun and epic. Now notice because I use the word they, I'm actually referring to the same thing, which is roller coaster and horror movies, which means that I know that I can actually use the same variable under the scope x, and then I can finish. Okay, it's probably time to just start writing some things down, so I know that the start of this is very straightforward. For everything, if you're a roller coaster or you're a horror movie, then you are scary. And I also need to say, and they are popular when and only when they are both fun and epic. So now I can say, and bracket, they are popular, popular is A, when and only when, that's the biconditional, they are both fun and epic. Well, fun is F. Epic is E, and so this is actually pretty easy. I just have to code everything properly. Who is they? Well, they refers to uh, my roller coasters or horror movies, and that, because I'm using the same scope, is just the letter X. So I know I can say AX, which is to say roller coasters and horror movies are popular when and only when, by conditional, they are both fun and epic. Both? Well, that's just and. So I get fx and ex. Pretty straightforward. Now, there's actually lots of ways to break this up and make it a much longer expression. For example, I could have two different expressions, one for roller coasters and one for movies, that say the same thing and get around the fact that I have to say the or in here. That's okay, but it's sort of ugly. Another thing I could do is split this up into two statements around the but, and I actually make the and the main connective. So I essentially just redo all this stuff and close the scope out. And I make the and the main connective, and I restate my group, cx or dx, then, and now I put in this part, ax by conditional fx and ex. I would say this move is pretty common, so it's worth writing it down for you to see. Um, and of course, you could split this up even further. So one way to symbolize this would actually just be, you know, ridiculously long, but I wouldn't recommend it. I think that either the first or the second are quite natural language interpretations. Question four. Bananas, which are tasty only if ripe, and eggplants are good for you if they are neither mushy nor rotten. 
Uh, this actually is probably the first slightly challenging question. Uh, and the reason why is because I have this statement in here, which are tasty only if ripe. And the trick is, because this is nested by commas, this is a non-restrictive clause. So I need to uh, symbolize this separately. Uh, the rest of it is actually pretty straightforward. So once I realize that, I can actually just go ahead and symbolize bananas are tasty only if ripe. Now, what's the best way to do this? Well, I just proceed normally. Bananas are tasty only if ripe. I have to ask, am I talking about all bananas or some bananas? Well, I'm clearly talking about all bananas, and bananas is my group, so I know it will start like this. Now I just need to symbolize tasty only if ripe. Well, how do I do this? I essentially ignore only. Only is a hard word, so this says, if it's ripe, then it's tasty. So that is, typically, it would be, if it's ripe, then it is tasty, which is A. But when I insert the word only, I actually get this. I reverse the order. So the first thing is, my non-restrictive clause is ripped out of my sentence, and I say, bananas are tasty only if ripe. And I need to preserve the arrow. This arrow is the main connective. X, X. And that is my non-restrictive clause. OK. Now I can say, and I can symbolize the rest. Bananas and eggplants are good for you if they are neither mushy nor rotten. Now, of course, there's a little mini trick here, which is this and. This is just like the cat dog again. So this actually is an or. And I proceed as normal. Am I saying all bananas and eggplants are good for you? Yes, I am. I'm not saying some, so I know I'm using a universal. Now, notice I could use x here, but I'll just change it to y. It's no big deal. And I know my group is bananas or eggplants, which is e, y. Now, what's the property? They are good for you. That's great. That's g. If they are neither mushy nor rotten. If is a conditional. Uh, I'm going to sort of put a marker there just to show that I haven't figured out the order yet. Neither mushy nor rotten. Well, you just have to remember how to symbolize neither nor. There are two ways. You can do it this way, or you can do it the De Morgan's way, and that's fine. Okay, so I'm ready to go. I know that this is my group, and my property is that if they are neither mushy nor rotten, then they are good for you. So I open a big bracket, neither mushy nor rotten. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Mushy is F, so not bracket FY, or rotten is D, DY. Then they are good for you. Good for you is G, G, Y. Close bracket, close bracket. OK, so that's a pretty nice example. It just involves you remembering how to do the non-restrictive clause. If you actually try and build the non-restrictive clause straight into this example, uh, it's just not going to make any sense. You're actually going to probably be saying something about eggplants, which isn't nested in the question. Remember, the easiest way to do a non-restrictive clause is just to rip it out, symbolize it, use the AND, and then symbolize the rest of the sentence without the clause. That's exactly what we did here. The rest of the sentence was very straightforward. The other thing this sentence, this question tests is do you remember how to do conditionals? Only if ripe, and over here there's another regular conditional. I could have made variants on this by actually symbolizing it in things like, uh, in terms of uh, necessary conditions, sufficient, stuff like that. You just have to remember all these things. Are there lots of different variants for symbolizing this? Very many variants, in fact, but it doesn't matter. If you have something slightly different than this, try and see if they're actually logically equivalent. Question 5. Not both Dazzler and Tony Stark are mutants. However, given that the former is, then there is someone who likes comics, and that the latter is, not implies that not everyone is a mutant. This is actually a really simple question. It just tests whether or not you remember how to use names. So Dazzler is the little d, Tony Stark is the little a, and I'm saying not both are mutants. Not both is typically symbolized like this, or you could symbolize it the De Morgan's form. Over here, I have however, which is and, okay. Well, I'm actually just ready to symbolize. Not both Dazzler and Tony Stark's are mutants. That's really easy. Dazzler is a mutant, is a D. And Tony Stark is a mutant, is a A. 
And this just requires you to remember how to do names. How do I say not both? I do the negation. This literally says it's not the case that D is a mutant and A is a mutant. But D is Dazzler, Tony Stark is a, little a. Okay, now I can say, however, and, given that the former is, then there is someone who likes comics, and that the latter is not, implies that not everyone is a mutant. This is just testing your understanding of former and latter. So, given that the former is, then, which is a conditional, there is someone who likes comics. Well, the former is, is just saying, Dazzler is a mutant. So, I'm ready to go. Dazzler is a mutant, then, that implies, there is someone who likes comics. Of course, there is someone is just an existential claim. There exists something, uh, let's call it X, that is a person, and that person likes comics. Okay, no problem. This is this part. Now, I get to say, and, that the latter is not implies that not everyone is a mutant. Well, the latter is not means Tony Stark is not a mutant, so it's not the case that AA implies, which is a conditional, not everyone is a mutant. So not everyone is a quantified claim. Uh, there's two ways to symbolize it. You can say not all, or there exists something that is not. I will do it the not all way. Uh, so I say it's not the case that for all, let's say Y, everyone is a person. So it's not the case that for everyone, then everyone is a mutant, A, Y. And I put this in brackets. Now, there is a bit of an oddity about this question because I have two ands and it's unclear which one's the main connective. It actually doesn't matter at all. If you want to make it the first one by putting brackets around this like so, that's fine, but it's actually perfectly logically equivalent. This question tests your knowledge of names and also tests whether or not you remember how to do former and latter. Uh, I could have changed this to not say former and latter, I could have just said in that case, and you would have to remember things like in that case always refers to the last case stated. Okay, last question. Translate the following sentence into idiomatic English using the provided abbreviation scheme. Uh, well, how do I do this? The trick to this is, in my opinion, to actually read it without focusing too much on the uh, actual sort of um, English written here in the abbreviation scheme. What does this actually say? It says it's not the case that everything that's an F, then B, then C. Uh, okay, well now I can sort of merge this around. Uh, well, what's F? Person. B is board games. And C is plays Monopoly. Well, just when you piece it together, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you prefer, you could actually think of trying to re-symbolize this. Uh, in a way that might make more sense to you. So I could symbolize this in the exact same way. So it says, it says now, it's not the case that everything that is an F and a B does C. So what's an F? Person, B is bo likes board games, and C plays Monopoly. Well, this is pretty straightforward. It says, not everyone who likes board games plays Monopoly. And then I'll have and. Okay, let's type that out. Not everyone who play, likes board games plays Monopoly. And I have an and. Well, I might as well just say but. I could say and. It doesn't matter what I say. And now I have to worry about the other part. It's not the case that there exists an A and a G and not an H. Okay? A is a store. G is sells games, and not H was sells Monopoly. So what does this say? It's pretty straightforward. It's not the case that there is a store that sells games and does not sell Monopoly. Well, the trick here is just make this idiomatic. But uh, there isn't a game store that doesn't sell Monopoly. Now, you could, of course, say, state this in a variety of different ways. You don't need to say there isn't a game store. You could say there is no store that sells games that doesn't sell Monopoly, uh, and so on. Uh, another sort of nice way to actually phrase this is you could have said, but all game stores sell Monopoly. And this is actually perfectly logically equivalent. In my opinion, this is actually sort of the nicer way to do it. 
Okay, I just did six questions. This is exactly what was in the case for uh, a test on on sim single place predicate logic symbolization. Uh, and I took a while to do it because I talked through it, but you should look at this and say, yes, this is totally doable in 20 or 25 minutes, no problem. Give these a shot. Good luck.